It started out as being a 40 billion aid for chips act. You know what where it stands now? 280 billion dollars. That is how much is going to be put into chips act. This number has completely ballooned out of shape after Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. What happened? And there are some very interesting clauses in this bill, which I'm going to talk about. First of all, the uh, big picture. The vote was 243 for and 187 against. So there were at least 24 Republicans who uh, crossed aisle and voted with the Democrats for this bill. So it was, you can say, bipartisan. 52.7 billion subsidies for U.S. computer chip manufacturing. Well, you know, there are not many people manufacturing chips now. That would be like commercial quality or something that would go into smartphone. I mean, the key chips, I, there may be some here and there off the line chips. There may be some chips that might be manufactured in the United States. But uh, these are like analog chips that Texas Instruments makes or uh, the CPU chip that Intel makes in some of its fabs and so on. So the bulk, about 75% of the chip production was happening in East Asia. And most of that is set to come back to the United States. So this would be a big boost for some areas, in my opinion, that will see a huge boost in high paying jobs and in overall uh, uh, prosperity for that region. One is, of course, Silicon Valley. The other one may be around San Diego. The third big one also is Texas in and around Houston where a new technology hub a technology hub has been forming and maybe there may be some other places like Oregon and Seattle these places even uh, New York may have some uh, 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 growth from this but I see these three places big ones are Silicon Valley the Houston ex uh, Houston Dallas area and uh, San Diego area because San Diego because Qualcomm Houston because Texas Instruments is headquartered there and uh, Intel and, and some of the global foundries and others are all uh, headquartered. Uh, NVIDIA, AMD, everybody is headquartered in the Silicon Valley. So that's where the majority of the jobs are. And again, the skill set resides in these areas. These things used to be there about 20 years ago. All these jobs vanished and went away to Taiwan, South Korea, China, what have you. Some of them may be American citizens that may come back, but we have to see how they are going to be able to uh, cut their links to their parent uh, country. We'll have to wait and see. The other big deal is for those companies who are going to start doing these things, there's a 25% tax credit. Today, the corporate law is at 20%, so 25% of that is 15%. Uh, so the net corporate taxation will be at 15%. And 100 and $1.5 billion for tech development for U.S. firms. This look like, you know, people will be solicited for uh, various proposals and these might be funded, might be again good for some startups with some good ideas. And Department of Commerce is going to set aside $10 billion to create 20 tech hubs. This is an interesting move. Um, beyond the areas that I said, they are trying to uh, diversify it and try and see if the rest of the America can also participate in this growth. That's a good thing. And uh, the more interesting things are that Bernie Sanders did not vote for it. He voted against it, even though he's a head of progressives. And he said that the semiconductor companies had a windfall of close to $70 billion. These people don't need handouts. All they need is an opportunity and they can fund it themselves. So he finds it very interesting that this much amount of money is going into it. The other interesting thing, Sarah Jacobs, who is a congresswoman from California, she belongs to the family of Qualcomm chip. She decided to not vote for it. She was just present in the house, but she neither voted for or against. And I don't know what Qualcomm's beef is about uh, this. Uh, it's something that I need to understand a little bit more. If I find out, I will share that with you. Certainly, it's a big win for some companies such as Intel, in my opinion. Again, you'll start seeing all these who's who lining up and everybody will be, uh, you know, probably hiring even through all these tough times. So we have to wait and see how that plays out. The other interesting clause in this bill, which is doing the rounds, which might affect India, is that it bans round tripping. 
Now the round tripping perhaps is being done with the view that if supposing you know people from um, you know if if the if if people are engaged to work from say Taiwan or from China, then they may again be uh, you know possible sources of leak of the commercial technology or the intellectual property. So they are trying to plug that loophole. Basically, what it says is that everything to do with semiconductors must be from beginning to end planned, designed, developed and delivered in the United States. It's a very noble aim. I don't know if it's possible. Uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, this is something that's going to be debated and I'm sure there'll be some exceptions that will be coming out on this, like this country is exempted or that country is exempted. We'll have to wait and see. That's an interesting battle on its own. But at this point of time, the president is expected to sign this into law in the next few weeks before the um, House and Senate take a recess for a five-week recess. So that's a pretty big recess for summer. So this is going to be coming down in the next few days. Uh, good news for some, but I'm not so sure that the amount that is being set aside, isn't that a little too much? Are there some kickbacks being planned? I don't know. I hope not because this is a very critical technology. Today, many cars are behind on schedule on delivery because they can't get all their parts. So this is a, a giant leap forward. Uh, let's see how it plays out. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar.